This video, I'll be reading my all new Wimpy Kid fanfiction parody book, Long Story Short. This will be the first section of Greg Hathley's finale of middle school. Also, if you end up loving the series, consider subscribing. You can always change your mind and watch a few videos to see what I'm all about. Anyways, enjoy the show. April, Monday. I've never realized this until now, but I actually have a lot of diaries. I like to call them journals, but it's kind of too late to change the titles once you have 15 of these books. However, don't let that deceive you. They are journals. I literally have a whole shelf dedicated to them, and I've never stopped writing since 6th grade. Mom thought this would be a one book sort of situation, but now she has to get a journal with a new color every few months. Here you go. Thanks mom, you're the best. Today she told me that the store's last variant was the white color. I knew this day would come eventually. At first, I was coming up with solutions for creating a new journal color, but then it hit me. It didn't really matter anymore. It was my third and final year of middle school, and there was less than two months remaining in the school year. This journal could be a fitting end to my middle school saga. Now, the question truly was, how will I cement my legacy at Westmore Middle School? I cannot be forgotten. The end of middle school didn't even cross my mind until last weekend, when Crossland High invited all the middle schools in the area for a school tour. It was optional, but mom made me go in order to get a first dive into what it's like to be a high schooler. She forced Roger to drive me to Crossland High, mainly because she had to work on her school treasurer campaign. On her way there, Roger definitely wasn't making high school seem like a walk in the park. You thought middle school was trash? You ain't seen nothing yet. Thanks, Roderick. You're a real life saver. Roderick warned me about the towering 6'6 six, six seniors as well as the bullies, who are literal hulks. Good luck with four years of depression. Ha ha ha. Can I just restart 6th grade? On top of all that, this morning dropped me at the wrong entrance, so I had to walk a half mile around the school until I saw the soon-to-be froshies. Greg, over here! The tour was one heck of a snooze fest. After that, they showed us a welcome video, which was just some high school propaganda. I love Crossland High. Crossland High is life. Who would ever say that? Either these kids were paid to say these lines, or the school picked the biggest nerds to make the video. Even though the tour was more boring than a piece of stale toast, the school was impressively huge. Finally, everybody gathered in the auditorium to hear a presentation from a staff member. I sat next to Rally and a couple other kids from my school. I looked around and saw all the different types of kids that would make up my grade. There were the Whirly Street kids, aka the Troublemakers, and the Lower Surrey Street kids. Whirly Street. Lower Surrey Street. I didn't know them too well, but there was the nerdy school from Cronbelt Heights and the rich private school kids. I know that it's not great to make assumptions, but those rich private school kids look like some snobby people. I asked my dad so many times for a Gucci bag, and he got me a Louis Vuitton. Like, excuse me, they are not the same. Anyways, the staff member that did the presentation was explaining the new schedule in classes. I wasn't really paying attention until he mentioned the electives that we were able to take. What really stood out were the art electives. They even had a graphic arts class, which included cartooning. I'm kind of on the fence between this class and others. Don't get me wrong. I like cartooning, but there really aren't any mega rich and famous people known for drawing comics. Maybe I should take business or marketing so I can make millions. On the other hand, Rowley wants to take band and intro to nursing. It's good for him that he already knows his passion, yet I still don't have a clue for what I want to be when I grow up. Tuesday. I've been dragging today for quite a while. I have to go to an orthodontist for a braces consultation. Granted, I don't think they're putting in the braces today, but it still frightens me. Like, I don't understand why I need to get braces. My teeth are almost aligned with one another. But I do know one person that definitely should have gotten braces by now. Mom says I have the best smile. Uh-huh. Raleigh's two front teeth stick out like a woodchuck. I think those are the only teeth that are actually adult teeth. So basically, about three weeks ago, my dad saw an ad in the newspaper for Dr. Kagan's new orthodontics department. Dr. Kagan Orthodontics, the team. Dr. Palaki Gupta, Dr. Rachel Starchki, Dr. Sean Desmond. We'll straighten out your kid at exit 39, highway 24. Braces, teeth and jaw straightening, oral treatment. Thankfully, I didn't see Dr. Kagan's name on the listed orthodontist. I was ecstatic to find Rachel's name on the ad. She was my hygienist at Tender Hugs Dental Care. However, based on my previous luck, I'm probably gonna get stuck with some other orthodontists. When I got to the orthodontist, I was led into one of the offices and definitely didn't expect who would be standing there. Have a seat, Greg. Snap. Wait, I didn't sign up for this. Man, I would have rather had a monkey fix my teeth than Dr. Kagan. It turns out the ad in the newspaper was a bit outdated, and Rachel found a new joint with a better position. Dr. Kagan told me that he would be filling in, as he also learned orthodontics in his dental school. People usually think surprises are good, but this was not a surprise that I wanted to hear. Dr. Kagan did more x-rays, but this time, I think he remembered the fiasco from last visit. He made me stand in front of this tall machine that rotated around me. He also put a heavy vest to block the electromagnetic rays. 
were... Wearing the vest was probably pretty important. I don't even want to think about what would have happened if I didn't wear it. Kaboom! Then Dr. Kagan cleaned my teeth. I really didn't appreciate it when he would stick the suction tube straight down my throat. Gag! Whoosh! Can you please stop moving around while I'm trying to clean your teeth? After the torturing, he installed some metal rings around my molars, which were supposed to hold my braces together down the road. Oh boy, I can't wait for my second visit. Friday. After school, Riley seemed really excited to show me something. I thought he could have bought the new Twisted Wizard game, but then I remembered Riley's not too big into video games. In fact, Riley came to present his new diary, which looks terribly similar to yours truly. I thought he stopped writing after he got the Sweet Secrets diary a while back. Surprisingly, he actually finished writing that book and he found the exact store where I get my journals from. Now we're really the diary twins. For starters, they're journals and not diaries. I don't know what kind of stalkish shenanigans Riley managed to get himself into, but this is straight up copycatting. I decided to let him know how I felt about his diary. Whack. I'm telling you, you could literally walk into school one day when I ate the cheese shirt, and the next day Riley would replicate the shirt down to the smallest detail. I scanned through Riley's atrocity of a diary. How does this boy still not know how to draw noses? Mind you, this is the same cartoonist that got chosen to write a comic strip in the school newspaper. How did a bunch of boomers choose such a bad comic strip? One thing I know for sure, Bradley needs a massive makeover. On Wednesday, Coach Malone introduced a new competition between the boys' PE class. It was called the Decathlon. Basically, there would be 10 events with different activities, and whichever team that accumulated the most points from all the games wins. I usually don't talk about PE class because I'm not too hot into exercise and sports. However, this time, there was a grand prize, a deep dish pizza party. I don't know if you ever tried deep dish pizza, but it's literally heaven for your taste buds. I tasted it in Chicago, so I don't usually get to eat it that often. They basically stuff a bunch of cheese, tomato sauce, and meats into this pan-shaped pizza crust. But that pizza party might be a bit harder to win than first anticipated. That's because Coach Malone put all the jocks and athleticism on one team, and the rest of the wimps on the other team. Nope, that looks fair to me. Tyrone, who is probably the biggest jock of all of them, got chosen by Coach Malone to be their captain. Then, I didn't expect this. Hefley, you'll be the other team captain. Say what now? I guess out of all of them, I was the best leader. This is supposed to be my legacy where I lead a bunch of nerds to victory. The Jacks called their team The Boys, which was an incredibly stupid name. I was sure we could come up with something much better. I thought we could name ourselves something cool like Wolverines or Mongoose. However, Riley wanted to name our team The Awesome Squad. I'm fine with that. Same here. Heck no! Nobody seemed to mind the cringiness of our name. Look Gregory, I'm just trying to survive PE. The name of our teams is the least of our worries. And Shirag was 100% right because the first event was dodgeball. As soon as the whistle blew, the boys sent a barrage of bright colored foam balls at once in our direction, and our team cowered with fear. People say that foam is pretty harmless, but if you wrap rubber around and mold it into a ball, those things are weapons of mass destruction. And it didn't help that a good amount of the boys play baseball, so they began curving the dodgeballs. How do you even do that? Our team was getting mowed down like a set of bowling pins. Shirag was still in, and he was trying to hide behind me. Shrug, stop being a baby. We need your intelligence because we're down to only five. I'm sorry, Gregory, but I'm too young to die. I told Shrug to get the ball in front of me and I would defend him. He reluctantly agreed, but he said it's only because you told me so. And he immediately got nailed point blank range in the butt. You're trash, get out of here. Ah! People at school always target Shrug like that. Last week he got a swirly by some of the jocks that were now part of the boys. But don't blame me because Shrug is like the only guy that's under five feet tall. He's just the easiest fish to catch. I'm pretty sure the boys purposely eliminated everyone but me so they could humiliate the captain at the end. I hadn't thrown a ball all games, so I just chucked a whimsy attempt that was caught by Benny Wells. That's a wrap! That's 20 points for the boys, as well as 10 bonus points for the entire team to stay in. And the awesome squad? Good effort. It was a huge blowout, but in my defense, half my team was hiding behind the bleachers before the game even started. That's where we're going to end for now. In the meantime, you can watch me draw a Wimpy Kid poster for 150 hours. Once I get the second part out, it'll be somewhere on the screen right now. Join a $30 Barnes & Noble giveaway in the description. So these are the shoutout winners from last time. Dude out 30 it's your boy Parker, Wizard Kids, 2D Fruity, Alley Plays, 123, and a Wob to follow. Oh no, I might need to start condensing the shoutouts soon because it's getting kind of packed. If you want to get a shout this time, just comment anything, but I'll only choose the first 8 people because then the video would be 20 minutes long. I'll see you guys soon.